It's cold. It's freezing. It's snowing. And it's time for Tired of Waiting the Movies. Happy New Year, Johnny. I thought we'd ring in the new year with an Alfred Hitchcock thriller. And I realized that we didn't do one of his early ones in America, 1941's Suspicion, starring Cary Grant, Joan Fontaine in an Oscar-winning role, Day May Witty, and Oreo Lee, and Nigel Bruce. This movie was based on a Francis Isles novel called Before the Fact. I always loved the titles of those novels. Before the Fact was one. Malice of Forethought was another one. And it had a script by Samson Raffleson and Alma Revel, who was Hitchcock's wife. Selznick was in the habit of loaning out his contract people, so he loaned Hitchcock out to RKO. And Hitchcock had just had a huge hit with Rebecca. Rebecca was the best picture of 1940. It made a star of Joan Fontaine. Joan Fontaine was readily agreeable. That's very kind of you. I think I will. They brought on Cary Grant. I think this is one of Cary Grant's greatest and most unusual roles because he plays a man who is a bad boy. You're not really going to church, are you? Certainly I am. I know you're not. You're coming for a walk with me. He is irresistibly charming and he's kind of a ne'er-do-well and he might be a murderer. Now, what did you think I was trying to do? Kill you? She's wealthy. She's an only child. He takes one look at her and zeroes in on her. It's not that she's unattractive, but she just has been living alone for a long time. I'm afraid she is rather spinsterish. Well, what's wrong with that? You all made a respectable institution. Well, she blossoms under him and she becomes radiantly beautiful. Are you courting me? Sir, I have the honor of asking for your daughter's hand in marriage. They go off on a honeymoon all around the world. He brings her back. He brings her into this house that he's bought for her. And she realizes that he hasn't got a dime to his name. He charges everything. And he thinks that he's married into money. But did, didn't you have any money of your own? No, oh, not a shilling. I thought I, I had the impression. Oh, that... And she kind of calls him on it. And he feels ashamed. And he's always wickedly funny and wickedly charming as only Cary Grant could be. You've got to go to work. Work? Yes, work. But he's sinister at the same time. and He'll turn and get ugly. <coughs> Johnny, get some water, quick. It won't help. I've seen this happen before. There's nothing much you can do about it. Now, that's no use, darling. It'll either kill him or it'll go away by itself. And I think that Cary Grant's own personality comes into play here because he was someone who never really believed in the character of Cary Grant. He always felt he was Archie Leach, the poor Cockney guy who grew up on the wrong side of the tracks with a mother in a mental institution and he never really got past that. And this, this movie brought out that dichotomy in his character very, very well. Oh, darling, come on, give us a smile. Uh, come on, old girl. I know. You tickle that chin I'll make faces. Think that'll work? He brings his best friend, Nigel Bruce. Now, Nigel Bruce was this British character actor who was famous for playing Dr. Watson in the old Sherlock Holmes movies with Basil Rathbone. Nigel Bruce was such a wonderful actor. He had played the brother-in-law in Rebecca. He was just... We saw him play one of his few nasty parts in The Rains Came, which we did on Tired Old Queen at the movies. And there's a scene when he and his servant, this this butler that he's treated terribly for years, are, have this showdown and the, and the wave is coming and he says, you've got to help me. And the... The, the, the butler says, uh, You're afraid. It's just, oh, I get tingles. It's just so exciting. In this one, he's sort of funny. His name is Binky. And he's his, he's Cary Grant's best friend. Oh, it's Binky. It's Binky. Hello, Russell. I'm Binky. You know, and he's, he's so funny. He's so chubby. Uh, I got something that never fails. Well, come on, that's it. Uh, I make a noise like a duck. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, Johnny is, you know, keeps getting into scrapes. He says he's got a job and he really doesn't have a job. And, and um, the father, Sir Cedric Hardrick, leaves them a wedding gift of these two antique chairs and he pawns them to get her gifts. You know, I mean, it's so, he's, oh, it's such a quintessential story of obsession and falling in love with the wrong person, but you just can't resist them. Johnny, look, look, look. It's a receipt from a certain shop for a certain pair of chairs. Paid in full and they deliver within the hour. Oh, look, she's smiling. I know, so she is. Gradually, she begins to think that her husband is going to kill her. And 
I, she has a friend who's played by this incredible character actress named Aria Lee. And Aria Lee's name in this movie is Isabel Sedbusk. And she writes British murder mysteries like Agatha Christie. And she lives in the town that John Fontaine lives in. So they all go to dinner. And Hitchcock was fascinated by homosexuals. He loved gay people. And in this dinner, there's this very well-dressed woman who's there who is obviously Isabel's lover. What's wrong with it, my dear chap? That's too complicated. They don't, there's no explanation as to who she is. She's just there. She's very mannish. She's very tailored. And uh, it's just such a lovely, lovely, quintessential sort of scene for Hitchcock. Izzy can always tell by looking at a person's face whether he or she is. And her brother is played by this actor who was the lover of Edward Edward Horton. He was a gay man, Gavin Gordon. Ah. They're talking about poisons. What poisons don't leave any trace? What about it, Doctor? <clears throat> A very interesting corpse dropped in the other day. Oh, I... do let's hear about it. No, no, please. And a couple of days later, she runs into Isabel and she says, Oh, that Johnny, that husband of yours, he would worm that out of me. And she says, what? Well, the name of that poison that doesn't leave any trace. So John Fontaine begins to suspect that he's going to get rid of her. Anyone can lay his hands on it. And within a minute after taking, the victim is beautifully out of the way. Mind you, it's undetectable after death. He's been getting more and more irritable, and, and she's been getting more and more suspicious. And he brings her up a glass of milk, and as he comes up the stairs, it's a very famous shot. Hitchcock wanted to have that milk glow, because you're not sure if it's poison. And he put a light bulb inside of the glass so that it glows as Johnny's coming up the stairs. And it heads towards its climax. There was a lot of quandary about how this movie would end. And I'm not going to tell you how it ends. You know, I want you to see it. It was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, John Fontaine won the New York Film Critics Award, and she won the Oscar that year over Betty Davis and the Little Foxes and Barbara Stanwyck and Ball of Fire. And it's a lovely performance. And she won the Oscar. It started a bitter rivalry. She won the Oscar over her own sister, Libby de Havilland, who was nominated the same year for Hold Back the Dawn. Are you serious? And she didn't like Cary Grant, and he didn't like her. He thought she was unprofessional, and that she didn't hold things up. And she thought he was a ne'er-do-well, and that he was too flighty and picky, and they didn't get along. But they have a great chemistry, and it feeds the relationship in this movie. I want nothing but to spend the rest of my life with you. And if you were to die first, I... If I were to die first... Listen, what about you? It's just old-fashioned Hollywood romance, and I thought it was a great way to start the year. Cary Grant, Joan Fontaine, Sir Cedric Cardrick, Dame May Whitty, Nigel Bruce, and the amazing Aurea Lee, who unfortunately died right after this. She was driving back home to New York after filming her scenes in this, and she was in a car accident in Kansas City and was killed instantly. And they buried her in Kansas City, so this was her one big chance. And she's fabulous in this movie. As in all Hitchcock movies, the character people are just as interesting as the leads, and I think you're gonna love Alfred Hitchcock's Suspicion. Happy New Year from all of us at Steve Hayes, Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Let's all go to the lobby. There are plenty of other people I would have rather killed. Jane Wyman. <laughs> the popcorn can't be beat.